Welcome to another edition of the Florida State Simicast. It's preview time again. North Carolina Tar Heels are rolling into Doak Campbell Stadium at 3.30 on Saturday. And if you know anything about North Carolina at all these past couple years under Larry Fedora, you probably already know that they have a good offense. Which is scary, because we all know how this Florida State defense is played. Which is to say, like, pure fucking ass. So, a little bit scared that another good offense is going up against the Knolls. Uh, let's start with their offense. I mean, where else can you start? Uh, their quarterback, I think his name is Trubisky, or something Russian or Polish, whatever. Uh, it's completed about 75% of his passes, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, and yet, you would think with that high completion percentage that he would be some check down Charlie, but if you look at his yards per attempt, uh, there, it's over nine, so he's probably fairly decent at throwing the ball downfield with that kind of uh, yards per attempt average. He also has 10 touchdowns to go with zero interceptions. Uh, the receivers on the outside, uh, from what I hear and read and gather from um, FSU people like Bud Elliott from Tomahawk Nation and Tinkram Smith from uh, the Nolcast that they both do, uh, the outside receivers are solid. They also have that classic uh, white white guy slot receiver, you know, the deceptively fast, the sneaky quick receiver, any other uh, generic adjective that are usually given the white wide, wide receivers or white athletes in general. Uh, I think that Switzer, don't know if he's in relation to Barry Switzer in any way, shape, or form, but... So they have a good passing attack. Uh, the running back is Elijah Wood, who I think is pretty good, actually. He's a big dude. Uh, probably, weighs up, probably weighs upwards of uh, 220 pounds or so. But Larry Fedora, their head coach, does not like to run the ball that much, quite honestly. He likes to sling it, and he's done that to his own detriment a few times. For instance, week one versus Georgia. He probably could have won that game if he, I don't know, ran the ball instead of just slinging it around and stopping the clock with incompletions. Uh, same with uh, week one last year versus lowly South Carolina. Same deal. Fedora is kind of the classic better coordinator than a head coach, at least in spurts th uh, throughout his head coaching career so far. Um, so needless to say, I'm a little worried with their kind of offense coming into Doak, going up this, going up against this horrible FSU defense, or at least it's been horrible so far. Uh, the bright side is they don't run up tempo, so that's nice, and their quarterback doesn't really run that much, so that's another positive. But I still expect them to put up points on the board. I mean, this quarterback has the ability to throw to receivers that are covered, and hello. Florida State's defensive backs like to let receivers just, you know, run free. Hey, fuck it. There goes that guy. You have him? I have him? No, you have him? Oh, he's open. Oh, well, too late now. So, yes, UNC is going to put points on the board. The question is, can FSU get enough stops to control this game, to win this game convincingly? Moreover, if they can, they will indeed do that very thing because UNC's defense is not good, and that's putting it nicely. They have given up, on average, over 200 rushing yards per game. So this could be South Florida Part 2. Maybe not to that degree, but close. I would suspect that Jimbo's going to come out running, and when he's done running, he's going to run some more, and when he's done running that time, he's going to run more, and... You should see the Knolls rushing yardage fall somewhere between 200 and 300 yards. If it's not, then FSU's in trouble. But they should be able to run the game, uh, run the ball this game. And hopefully they can because that'll obviously keep UNC's offense off the field. And the more you can do that with this crap Florida State defense, uh, the better. The little I know about UNC's defense is they have a couple good D linemen. And that's about all I know. I know they can't stop the run. Uh, I'm not really sure how their secondary matches up. 
But honestly, the only passes that should be thrown in this game with uh, regularity should probably be play action, rollouts, stuff like that to play off the running game. Because again, Cook, Patrick, and even Francois should be able to get theirs on the ground this game. Um, I mean, uh, this should be a game I shouldn't worry about, or any FSU fans worry about. But again, the defense, it's like any competent opponent can beat FSU if FSU doesn't play well. I think FSU is going to win this game. I will say that. I'm, I'm glad it's in Doak. Uh, I will say that. And uh, I think the the over-under is in the neighborhood of 70, if I heard that correctly. I don't know if they'll get that. That's, that's a pretty high over-under. But I would probably pick somewhere around that. I, I, an arbitrary score prediction? I'll go with... Florida State 42, UNC 30. And that's being nice. <laughs> that's being nice, saying FSU only gives up 30 points to what is a, a good offense. But crossing my fingers that FSU will indeed be able to run the ball well and keep UNC's offense off the field. Coincidentally, Jimbo has yet to beat North Carolina. Uh, of course, he's only played them once as a head coach, so he's 0-1. Uh, but they ought to win this game. If they don't, then, jeez. Not really much else to look forward to. Uh, but I, th I think they will win this game. And then uh, you're hoping, or I'm hoping, that they're not looking forward to Miami next week. Because uh, originally, uh, when I did like a season prediction, I had to do it for a sport mass media class I had. We had to write this silly little blog. And one of my blogs was just this simple, basic, game-by-game -game predictions. And actually, this was the loss I picked. <laughs> I picked the Knolls go 11-1. and This is back in April, mind you. This is before I knew uh, the defense was soft as baby shit. But I had picked the Knolls to go 11-1. and I picked this game as the loss. For no other reason than it was in the middle of a rough stretch, and it was right before Miami, so maybe the whole trap game thing. Um, FSU is currently, I think, a ten or eleven point favorite, which I'm, it's hard for me to put FSU as that high of a favorite against any team that has any kind of offense. And after Miami, it's I think Wake and a bye, and then Clemson. If they can somehow just get past North Carolina here. And then pull out a win in Miami, then you then you, then we can all breathe because it's wake and a bye, and then you can kind of get geared up for the Clemson game. And speaking of Clemson, they play Louisville this Saturday, and if you're an FSU fan, I'm sure you are. If you're listening to this, you have to root for Clemson to win if you want any chance in hell of Florida State vying for the division title. Louisville is currently a two-point favorite, but Clemson is at home. And their defense, once again, despite losing everybody and their mom to the draft or graduation or both, seemed to be uh, seemed to be good yet again. I, geez, I wouldn't mind if FSU had Brent Venables right now as a defensive coordinator. I'll tell you that. The guy does a fantastic job. No, Clemson hasn't exactly played a bunch of great offenses. Auburn's offense sucks. Georgia Tech's offense sucks. And I can't recall off the top of my head who the other their other uh, two opponents have been. But even so, they still look good. They have a great defensive line. Hopefully they can pull off the victory. Then again, chances FSU beats Clemson October 29th, probably slim and none before the season started. I thought FSU would win that in a close in a close battle. Uh, I like that FSU was at home. I thought FSU's defense would be good. Wow, was I way wrong. Of course, a lot of people were wrong about that. But hopefully James is back by that point. Anyways, enough of looking forward. The UNC game, very simply, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. UNC can't stop anybody. They can't stop anybody running the ball. So hopefully um, the line is completely health healthy for FSU, the offensive line. I heard maybe Dickerson missed a practice recently, according to uh, Tomahawk Nation. Hopefully he's okay. 
not that he's a world beater, he's a true freshman, but you thought that they solidified the starting five after last week with Rubel and Dickerson and on the right side. Um, other injury news, Josh Sweat has practiced the past couple days. He should play in this game. That is big news. Naughty has practiced. Trey Marshall has practiced. All good things for a change on the injury front. Hopefully all three play, or at least two out of the three play, because you need all, all, all hands on deck for, all, for an offense that's good. And speaking of good offenses, you've had a dynamic offense in Ole Miss, a dynamic offense in Louisville, a decent to good offense in South Florida, and now a good offense in, in UNC. This defense, which is by all measures not good, has also had to face a lot of good offenses. Again, that's not an excuse. The defense is, is, has been bad, whether it's due to injuries, poor coaching, lack of effort. All those things are factors, but when you combine that with facing good offenses, it's just a recipe for just disaster. Um, hopefully they can at least be somewhat competent this Saturday. We'll see. UNC is going to get their points, likely through the passing game. Let's just see if Florida State can make enough stops. Uh, hopefully they can. And I hope Francois runs the ball more. Uh, a lot of people are really getting tired of Jimbo not using a quarterback that has the ability to run. Okay, Ponder ran quite a bit, of course. That was more so during Fisher's OC days. Manuel, for some reason, just they didn't run him as much as he should have been ran. Uh, of course, Winston, you know, is not a great runner. But in this day and age, and Bud Elliott from Tomahawk Nation and others have pointed out that Jimbo needs to start changing and getting with the times as far as college football goes. It behooves teams to use their quarterback in the run game, whether it's the run pass option, whatever the hell. Uh, the read option, whatever the fuck, they need to use Francois's legs more. Supposedly, Smag is healthy. So he's the insurance policy. Uh, you you would think that Jimbo would throw Francois out more, knowing that Smag's ready, waiting in the wings, but who knows, maybe he won't. Jimbo just might be stubborn. Anyways, Florida State wins this game, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, 42 uh, to 30. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be on pins and needles the whole damn game, which I shouldn't be against the Tar Heels, but when you don't have a defense, that that's what happens every Saturday. It's like 2009 all over again. Anyways, thank you for listening. If you're a first-time visitor to this channel, please feel free to subscribe. And this has been another Florida State Semicast. I'm out.